Today we're looking at editing some fine art architectural photography in Photoshop. Just showing some simple techniques that I use. If you've got any better techniques, which you will probably have, because Photoshop has loads of ways of doing things, just leave those in the comments. Thank you. The first thing we need to do is actually get the photo. So let's go and get the bus. Okay, that is an angry office worker who's realised he's not what bought one of our latest prints. Building all the time in Manchester. The building's down there, I'm sure they weren't there a couple of weeks ago. Now, I'm not using a tripod because there are a lot of people walking around. This is a workplace, so uh, it wouldn't be fair. Also, uh, the weather forecast said there's going to be gusts of wind over 20 miles an hour, so it's not going to work anyway so let's get some pictures done what we're looking for is some shapes and some contrast this is one angel square in manchester so let's get the pictures taken and back into lightroom here we are with the pictures in lightroom and before we switch it to black and white we're going to make sure the picture itself is okay we're not going to be doing much here i'm going to add a little bit of contrast look at the whites again not a lot just a bit than the blacks yeah we're okay with that uh, maybe some clarity yes that's fine what we're going to do then is change it to black and white there we go now normally we would be uh, amending the sliders to get different effects but we're not going to use those this time because we're going to do all the work in photoshop here we have our image in photoshop and the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer just in case we mess up and then we're going to tidy up this layer first of all then we will select the lasso tool and make a selection of anything we want removing from our image then we'll click on edit and fill and this box appears make sure that content aware is highlighted and then just simply press ok and it's gone so we need to deselect the area we selected which is command and D on a Mac now we're going to look at our image we're going to break it down into sections looking at this I'm going to have the sky as one section the top of the building where it's lighter as another we'll call that top right then we're going to have a top left and finally the bottom half of the building I'm just going to call that just bottom there are the loads of different tools you can make selections within Photoshop and all this are going to keep it simple because I use the polygonal lasso tool. You've got to remember I'm just doing this quickly uh, but the more time you spend on making your selections the better your image will look. So I have selected the sky now I'm fairly happy with that it doesn't have to be perfect for this demonstration. What we need to do is press on select go down to save selection then name your selection so this one is the sky so we'll put that in and then press ok now we can deselect the sky and start working on our other three selections remembering to save each selection as we uh, have made it and name it so we won't get confused now we're going to put a new layer on that one that doesn't interfere with anything below it so it's Control Alt Shift and E on Windows and Command Option Shift and E on a Mac. And what we're going to do then is put this layer on and we're going to actually name it Sky. Then we go down to our selections tab and go to load selection and we find our sky selection and press OK this will bring up our saved sky selection now we're going to add a exposure adjustment layer and we're going to darken the sky with this so we take our exposure down just a touch you can see it changing there is a bit of a glow around the building as you can see there but this is easily fixed 
by sampling just part of the sky and simply brushing that colour on around the building. Because the sky is selected, it, your brush colour will not uh, bleed over into the building. Then we simply just deselect the sky. I'm quite happy with that. Now we can make a new layer the same way as we did previously. Now let's go to our saved selections and load the top right selection. And this time we're going to make a curves adjustment layer. And we're going to play with this line until we get our desired effect. You've got to remember that pushing the line upwards does make your selection brighter. So we just amend it until we're happy with what we've got. And then we'll make a new layer as we did previously. Now what I think we'll do is add a little bit more contrast to the overall image. And it's just a case of playing about until it pleases you and you're happy with everything there. Now we're going to add another layer as we have done previously. And we're going to be working on the bottom part of our building. So we're going to go into select load selections. We're going to pick the bottom part of our building. And for this one, we're going to actually make this one darker via a curves adjustment layer. So it is a case of just bringing the line down. Before we pushed it up to make it lighter, now we're going to pull it down to make it darker until we're happy with what we've done. I'm happy with that. Now what I want to do is make this part brighter and we're going to use a gradient to do this. So we're going to add another layer as previously done. I'm not 100% happy with the bottom part of that, so I'm going to add another curves layer and we're going to uh, darken it a bit more, I think, and uh, just play around with it until we get what we want to do and then we'll look at the gradient. Now, when you've selected your gradient tool from the left hand side, make sure at the top your reflected is clicked just to get the effect that we want. Now, from the center of your curve, you just keep pulling outwards until you get the effect that you want and it's as bright as you want it does take a little bit of playing around with this so i'm going to carry on and we'll jump to when i've finished but you've got to keep making sure that the selection you're working on is the bottom part of the building now we're going to load our top left part of the building in make that selection and we'll use a curves adjustment layer again just to get the color we desire then when you're happy with everything, we're going to create a new layer because we've not finished yet. So load your sky selection from your save selections. Press OK. Then click on filter, render and then clouds. Now don't worry, we've not finished yet. We're going to add a layer mask to this layer and we're going to actually just going to paint out the clouds and just leave the shape that we want. Remember using black and then we're just going to brush out to what we want to leave. There we go, I'm happy with that. Now we need to make sure on our layer that the clouds are actually highlighted and not the mask. Now from there we're going to go into filter and blur. 
Now we're looking for motion blur. There we go. And you can actually see it as you alter it. You can change the direction of your clouds. And once you're happy, you can press OK. And you can keep repeating this blurring process as many times as you want until you've got the clouds looking like uh, you want them to. So this is the before picture and this is afterwards.